Hey guys, Matt here from mksmarthouse.com and in this video we are going to be setting up the software for the home automation server using a Mac. As you may have noticed I did say using a Mac because in this video we are going to be setting up the software of the server using a Mac. If you are using a Windows computer then look in the description for the video using a Windows computer. Please also go ahead and press the like button because if all 5 videos in the home automation server series hit 200 likes then I will release the videos on how to actually use OpenAB2 sooner than it is scheduled. First thing we are going to do is put the OS on the micro SD card. So go ahead and grab the micro SD card, which like I mentioned in the hardware video, should be at least 16 gigabytes and a class 10. Anyway, take the micro SD card and connect it to your computer, either directly or like me and grab a micro SD card reader. Next, we are going to download the OpenHabian image. The link will be over in the guide on mksmarthouse.com website. Speaking of, this entire guide is available on the website in written form, which I recommend having open alongside this video, so that way you can go to links and type in commands faster. Moving on, go to the link then scroll down to downloads. Download the Raspberry Pi image by clicking on the file called openhabianpi something something img It should download. Next, go to the next link to download Apple Pie Baker. On the website, scroll down to the most recent version, recommended, and click download now. Once it downloads, open Finder, then go to your downloads folder. Double click to unzip the applepiebaker.zip. Then double click on Apple Pie Baker to open the program. You might get a warning saying unidentified developer. If so, go to system preferences, and then security, and privacy, then click the button open anyway. A box will pop up, click open. Now we are in Apple Pie Baker and it will ask for admin password for your computer. So type it in and press OK. Next in the left side click and select your micro SD card. Then in the IMG file field click the three dots to browse for the image. Head over to your downloads folder and select the OpenHabian IMG file and click open. Then click restore backup. When the box pops up that says your Apple Pie is ready, click OK and remove the micro SD card from your computer. You can now quit Apple Pie Baker. Now that the OS is written to the micro SD card, take the micro SD card and put it into the Raspberry Pi. The logo on the SD card should be facing down. Then take the other end of the power adapter and plug it in. The Raspberry Pi is now booting and setting up for the first time. Please be patient and set a timer for 45 minutes because it has to expand. Once 45 minutes have passed, the Pi is now booted and ready for us to configure. But before we access it, we should give it a static IP address so we can access it easy at all times. First thing we have to do is open up a web browser and go to the main router's IP address. Mine is 192.168.0.1 and then log in. Then go to DHCP and DHCP client list. Then look through the list and find open Habian Pi. Copy its MAC address and head over to Address Reservation. Click Add New and in the MAC Address field, paste the Pi's MAC address. There is one more field to fill out and that is the IP address. I put 192.168.0.4 because that is the next available static IP address I have. Click Save and in the pop-up box, click OK. There will be a little warning saying that it needs to reboot, so click on the thing that says click here and press the Reboot button. When the box pops up, click OK. Let the router restart and when it finishes, unplug the Raspberry Pi, wait 10 seconds, and then plug it back in. Wait one minute for the Raspberry Pi to boot back up. Great, now the Raspberry Pi is ready for configuration. So the first thing we're going to do is configure the web part of OpenHab. So open up the web browser and go to your Pi's IP address with the colon 8080 on the end. You should now see a web page asking which setup you like. We are obviously going to press Expert. Now it should be installing our user interfaces. This could take a couple minutes, so be patient. Once it is done, open up Terminal either through Launchpad or using Spotlight. For this part, I recommend having my website up so you can just copy and paste commands. Anyway, type in ssh openhabian at your Pi's IP address. Obviously replace the your Pi's IP address. I replaced mine with 192.168.0.4 and then press enter. Then type in yes and press enter again. It will ask you for a password which the default is OpenHabian. Awesome! Now we are in our Raspberry Pi. The first command we are going to issue is sudo openhabian 
dash config and press enter. It will ask you for a password, so enter the default one, OpenHabian. Next, use the arrow keys and go to update and press enter. Once it finished running the update script and you're back at the selection screen, use the arrow keys and go to upgrade system and press enter. Once this script is complete, use the arrow keys and go down to Mosquito and press enter. Then on the screen while continue is highlighted, press enter. We will not be using MQTT authentication, so use the arrow keys and go over OK and press enter. It should now be installing our MQTT server. When that is done installing, press enter over OK. And then back on the selection screen, use the arrow keys and go to exit and press enter. It should give you a warning that we didn't change the password, so we are going to change some passwords. I recommend using the same new password for the next two things. The first thing is the sudo slash ssh password. So type passwd and press enter. We are now going to change the password. So enter the default password openhabian and press enter. Then enter a new password and press enter. Then confirm that password by typing it in again and press enter. It should say updated successfully. We are now going to change the Samba password. I will explain what that is later. Anyway, type in sudo space smbpasswd openhabian and press enter. Now type in a new password. I recommend using the same password as the sudo password, so type it in and press enter. Then type it in again and press enter. Next we are going to change the time zone and locale so that the Raspberry Pi can set the date and time. Type in t time date ctl list dash time zones and press enter. Then use the arrow keys to scroll down through the list to find your time zone. Once you find it, highlight it and then copy it or remember it, then press control Z on your keyboard to exit. Type in sudo space time date ctl space set dash time zone Europe slash Berlin, but replace the Europe slash Berlin part with your time zone and then press enter. Then type time date CTL and press enter to check the time zone. So now type in sudo space reboot and press enter. You might have to type in the sudo password and press enter. Your Raspberry Pi should reboot. Next we are going to test out the MQTT server we just set up. So once it is done rebooting, go to mqttfx.org or click the link on the website guide. Once on the website, press download mqtt.fx. Then click on the one below latest version. It will take you to a new page. Click on the file that has the ending macOS.dmg. It will start downloading. Once it downloads, open up Finder and go to your downloads folder. Double click on MQTT effects with the ending macOS.dmg. A box should pop up. Double click on MQTT effects installer. It should give a warning of unidentified developer. So go to system preferences, security privacy, and then click open anyway. Another box will pop up. Click open. Then go through the setup by clicking next two times and then finish. It is now installed, so go to Launchpad and click on MQTT.fx. This is now a good time to explain what it is. This is a program that tests MQTT stuff so you can debug it and see if it is working. Click on the gear at the top. Change broker address to the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Mine is 192.168.0.4. And make sure the port is 1883. Then at the bottom, click Apply and then Cancel. Now click connect. If it connects successfully and there is a green circle in the top right, then you are good. Go over to the subscribe tab and type in the pound symbol and press subscribe. Then in the publish tab, type in hi in the field and then in the big box, type in hello world. Then hit publish. Then go back to the subscribe tab and if you see hello world, then we are very good. We successfully set up the MQTT server. Now let's connect the MQTT server to OpenHab. So Go to open up your web browser and go to your Pi IP address colon 8080. Replace the your Pi IP address with your Pi's IP address. Mine is 192.168.0.4 colon 8080. Then click Paper UI. Paper UI is the web administration panel for the home automation server. In the left column, go to Add-ons. 
In the search box, type in MQTT. Next to where it says MQTT binding, click install and wait for it to install. When it finished, go back to terminal and SSH into the Raspberry Pi. Type in SSH space open Habian at 192.168.0.4. Replace the 192.168.0.4 with your Pi's IP address and press enter. Then type in your sudo password and press enter. Type in sudo space nano space slash etc slash openhab2 slash services slash mqtt dot cfg and press enter. The only thing we're going to change is the server or URL to our broker. So delete the line that is on the screen now. and replace it with broker.url equals tcp colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.4 colon 1883. But change the IP address to match your Raspberry Pi. Press control X on your keyboard and then press Y, then press enter to save. Congratulations, we have now set up the OpenHab2 home automation server with MQTT. What we did is set the groundwork and the structure for the rest of the OpenHab2 and our MQTT devices. In the next videos, after the final installation of this server, we will talk about creating the interface for our smart home system in OpenHab, as well as the rules for automation. All right, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, or head over to the mksmarthouse.com forum, where you have a better chance of it getting answered. Goodbye.